Hey everybody, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're going to be making some smoked corned beef. We'll be making ours on our Pit Boss pellet grill, but you can follow along no matter what type of smoker you have. We're going to show you how we pick out our corned beef, season it, smoke it, and then how to finish it in a braise for that classic corned beef flavor while maintaining a delicious smoky bark on the outside. Corned beef is a beef brisket that's already been brined in a salt and pickling solution. This is what gives it its distinctive pink color, similar to a ham. I found this four pound one at Costco. Most of the time corned beef is taken from the flat section of the brisket, although sometimes it will be taken from the point. We went in depth on our smoked brisket video about the differences between the flat and the point sections if you want to learn more about this. But for now, just know that the flat is the leaner section and the point is the fattier section. Just like when picking out a brisket, turn it over and try to find a corned beef with a good amount of fat and marbling running throughout the meat. Take it out of the packaging and set the seasoning packet that comes with it aside for now. Give the corned beef a good rinse under cold running water and get off any excess salty brine from the outside surface. After this, pat it nice and dry with some paper towels. You'll notice just like on a regular brisket, there's a fat cap side and a leaner meat side. I've never had to trim any fat from these prepackaged corned beefs as they're usually pretty well trimmed already. However, if there's any large, hard chunks of fat hanging off, go ahead and just cut them off. We're going to season the outside of the corned beef with a rub consisting of two teaspoons of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon ground coriander, quarter teaspoon of dry mustard, and plenty of fresh cracked black pepper. This will help give us a nice flavorful bark on the outside of the corned beef while it smokes. I'll put a link to the full recipe down in the description below. You'll notice we're not adding any salt whatsoever to the rub on our corned beef. This is because it's already been brined in a heavy salt solution and is very salty already. If you add more salt or a regular barbecue rub with salt already in it, you're just going to end up over salting the meat and ruining the corned beef. So don't add any more salt to the outside. I like to place the corned beef on a wire rack over a foil lined baking sheet when smoking on a pellet grill. We want to keep it fat side up to get a nice bark on this side and the foil lined baking sheet will help block any direct heat coming from below that might possibly dry out the leaner meat side while it smokes. Go ahead and start up your smoker and set it to 270 degrees. Today we're going to be using these almond cabernet pellets from Naughty Wood. If you watch our channel you know that we really like this brand and flavor of pellets on beef especially. We're also going to be lighting up a pellet tube smoker with these same pellets to get some extra smoke flavor while our corned beef cooks. We made a video showing step by step how to light a pellet tube smoker the correct way to get more smoke flavor when using a pellet grill. I'll put a link to that video down in the description if you want to check it out. You want to angle your pellet tube a little bit away from the temperature probe if you're using a pellet grill because if you have that those uh, hot pellets right by your temperature probe, it's going to throw off your uh, temperature reading. So make sure that's pointed away from it so it's not interfering with it. And on my grill, you got the uh, smoke coming off the pellet tube. It's going to go right over the corned beef and out our exhaust over here. We're going to go ahead and close the lid now to let our temperature come back up to 270. Um, I'm going to open up the exhaust on mine quite a bit. I found that if you open it up as far as it'll go pretty much, that really helps with keeping the pellet tube lit. Otherwise, this can smolder out and go out on you, but you need a lot of airflow coming through to help keep those pellets lit and smoking. So we're gonna open it up all the way and that'll hopefully help keep our pellet tube lit the whole time we're smoking the corned beef. Our corned beef has been smoking for about an hour now. We still got a ways to go, but we're going to go ahead and get our uh, meat probe in so we can start tracking the temperature. As you know from our other videos, we like using the meter thermometer because there's no wires to deal with at all. It'll measure your cooking temperature as well as the internal meat temperature. So I want to go in kind of the thicker part of the corned beef here. So I'm going to come in from the side like this, get it through there and kind of right into the center as far in as I can get it basically. And then that's going to start tracking our internal temperature for us. Like I said, we got a ways to go, but at least we'll get this going. And uh, you can see we're getting a nice color on the outside, even just from an hour of smoke. Um, we're going to go ahead and rotate this around just so we're getting some even cooking on all sides. And uh, let this keep smoking for a little while. So if you're using a meter like we are, you're going to open up the app and uh, set up your cook. We're going to pick beef. They're not going to give you a corned beef uh, choice but it's a brisket flat so we're gonna pick brisket 203 would be the final temperature for brisket we're not gonna bring it all the way up to there just yet but uh, we'll leave that there for now and then we're gonna go ahead and hit start cook and that way we can start monitoring our internal temperature like I said it's only been on for an hour so we're really only at 78 degrees and uh, we'll keep an eye on it and we'll come back here in a little bit 
Let the corned beef smoke for about three to four hours at 270 degrees, rotating as necessary to make sure it cooks evenly. Once the internal temperature is up to about 150 to 160 degrees internally, you can remove it from the smoker and then increase the heat inside the smoker to 325 degrees. At this point, the corned beef is partially cooked and should have plenty of smoke flavor, but it's not gonna be as tender as we want it to be yet. Like our beef brisket, most of those tough collagen fibers don't really start to break down until you get up to about 170 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So next is our braising stage, which is gonna be similar to the wrapping stage on a beef brisket. Braising will help tenderize and flavor the corned beef, as well as draw out some more of that excess salt from when it was brined. If we were cooking this in the classic way, we would have put the raw corned beef into a pot of simmering water on the stove and just cooked it until it was done. They package corned beef very salty, knowing that this is how most people cook it, and that a lot of that salt will get drawn out into the water as it cooks. So if you just smoke your corned beef straight to the end without ever braising it, you may find it overly salty and also a little dried out. Transfer the corned beef to an aluminum foil pan with the fat side still up. Then pour in the braising liquid until it's about one half the height of the corned beef so that the bark we've made on the fat cap continues to stay dry. For the braising liquid, we used half water and half low sodium beef broth, which in a pan this size was about two cups of each. We're going for a lower concentration of salt in the braising liquid than is currently in the corned beef. This will help draw a little more salt out of the meat while still tenderizing and adding flavor. Go ahead and add the seasoning packet that came with it to the braising liquid as well. This contains mostly herbs and coriander seeds, which will help give it more of that classic corned beef flavor. Then cover the top in aluminum foil and place the whole pan back in the smoker, now running at 325 degrees. Since we're done adding smoke at this stage, if you want to save some pellets, you can finish it in the oven at 325 degrees and you'll get similar results. If you're using the meter thermometer, you can leave it right in place. This is what's nice about having a completely wireless probe thermometer. Continue cooking until it reaches an internal temperature of about 203 degrees. For us, this took about another two and a half hours, so about six hours of total cooking time on this four pound corned beef. Remove the pan from the smoker and let it rest in the braising liquid on the counter. We've let the corned beef rest for about 20 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and take it out and put it on a cutting board. We're gonna go ahead and slice the corned beef now. Make sure you got a good meat slicing knife like this one from Merico. We're gonna, we got the grain of the meat just basically running side to side. So we're gonna cut in uh, slices going this way. So we're gonna start on the edge here and just work our way down through it. So let's go ahead and give this a try. You can see that corned beef is nice and tender. Pulls apart, but isn't falling apart. Let me go ahead and try a little piece here. Mm. There's just so much flavor in it. It's got that classic pastrami corned beef type flavor from the brine, but now it's got a lot of smoke flavor as well. It's got a lot of great flavor from that rub we added at the beginning. And I really recommend leaving that fat cap out of the braising liquid like we did, so that that top, you get a really nice crust on the outside, a little contrast to texture as well. There's just so much going on here. This is probably some of the best corned beef I've ever had. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Make sure to click all the things. And most importantly, go to madbackyard.com where you can find all our step-by-step -step recipes, including this one, which I'll put a link to down in the description. And make sure to sign up for our newsletter so you never miss a new recipe when it comes out. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're gonna- If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Wait for the car to go by.